Robert Gruler here. Today we're talking about a New York Supreme Court judge who is in a little bit of hot water. He was found back in June with his shirt off, screaming at the neighbors. They called the police. The police showed up. They came to their neighborhood, and it got bad from there. The Supreme Court judge's wife started to get into it with the cops. The cops actually went and put her in handcuffs, and the Supreme Court judge ran over to the cops and pushed him over. Later, he was put in handcuffs. The whole thing ended up with no criminal charges for either the Supreme Court judge or his wife. And of course, we got to ask the question, is that just, is that how this is all supposed to work? My name is Robert Ruler. I am a criminal defense attorney. My team and I, we've handled many, many thousands of cases with people who've been charged with crimes. And over the course of our representation, we've seen people in these exact situations get charged, get arrested, get booked, get thrown in jail, and unfortunately sometimes end up with criminal convictions. So what's the deal? Why is this judge not being held to the same standard that you or I would be held to. Well, that's what we're going to get into today. First and foremost, was it even a crime? We're actually going to analyze some of the New York statutes to decide whether this was officially a crime. It's po very possible that the police could have just came and investigated the case, reviewed the facts, reviewed the law, and said that no charge should be filed. But we're going to dive into the statutes and you can judge for yourself. There's also the issue of this is a judge. Why is he drunk on the side of the road screaming? at his neighbors and threatening the police, what's that going to do to his ability to continue to be a judge? And is he under investigation there? If you're not already familiar with the story, talking, of course, about Judge Mark Grisanti. This is the gentleman right here. On the left is a file photo. And on the right was back in June 23rd when this whole ordeal took place. Now, why are we talking about a case that happened back in June? Well, it's because the body camera footage just was recently released. This came from law360.com and they've got the actual footage that we're going to go through frame by frame. We're going to analyze it and then we're going to apply the statutes to the facts of the case. This judge is a Supreme Court judge. This judge is somebody who sits on the bench of the highest court in the city or in the state of New York. It's a very, very prestigious position. And you can see here that this was this is him, right? This is Judge Mark J. Grisanti. He is a Supreme Court judges, uh, justice. Uh, my cursor is blocking a little bit of that right there. Supreme Court justice, and he is, uh, this is him. This is him if you want to contact him or contact his office. Uh, but you can see here he served on the term for 2019, and he's got a special term in 2020, and he's actually got court tomorrow. So today is October 14th. He's got court tomorrow for the special term, again on the 29th, and then a couple court dates in November and December, and that is all from the New York Supreme Court website. So we're talking about the right guy here. Now, what I want to do is go into my video editing software and show you around, show you how this works. This is the body camera footage that was pulled by Law360, and they have made it available, and so we went through some of it. There's three different body cameras in total, or three different clips. The final clip we're not really going to talk about because we're just we're more interested in uh, what actually happened with this altercation between the officer and some of the other potential criminalities of this judge. And so let's go through it. Now, there is a, there were a lot of swear words in this. Uh, both every, basically everybody involved in this case has the uh, the mouth of a sailor and we clipped out as much as we could, but I want to just kind of scrub through the opening here. So down here on the bottom, this is my video timeline and this is the first clip that we'll just scrub through. So the cop shows up, he rolls up into this neighborhood. This is the judge Grisanti over here. This is his wife and the neighbors are on the the other side and they're just getting into it with one another. I'm not going to play all this because it kind of goes on, but you can see the officer is you know, pulling up and uh, forgive the audio, but you're going to hear a lot of kind of screaming and shouting. You know, they're all just very angry. It's a lot of kind of nonsense going on and you're going to see she walks over. So that's Grisanti's wife gets in her face. The neighbors are just, you know, everybody's basically drunk at this point, screaming at each other. And there's a lot of swear words and F-bombs. So we're going to leave all of that out. But uh, the cops are now showing up. So you can see that we're watching this from one body camera angle. And another cop is going to show up and they're actually going to splice these two body cameras together, which is right about here where it starts. 
And so you can see this is officer one, this is officer two, and the parties are starting to get separated and the judge's wife is now back across the street. Now we're gonna start playing it from here, but this, this officer is telling her, uh, basically it, it's time for you to stop screaming. All right, I need to start talking to people. It's time for you to quiet down and she refuses to do that. So let's listen in. My driveway is busy. So they knew I called the cops. Come out, you got a problem? All right, so at this point in time, what the officer wants to do is get everybody's story. And he's talking to the neighbors. And so this judge's wife is now just, you know, ranting and raving across the street. And she's coming back. And now she's interfering with this officer's ability to conduct his investigation. So he's getting pretty tired of it. And he tells her, get back across the street. Yes, they really? come out. They come out. I'm walking she, the dog. They come out on the porch. She they start she yelling at her. The no, first thing was all right, now listen here. So she is now screaming back at Joe. She's saying, Joe, Joe, listen, one of my sons, wait till my son hears about this. Her son, who happens to be a police officer. Let's listen. Wait, get, wait till my son hears what you're saying. Stop from the yelling. Camera. This is going to be a problem. Three of them I don't care. Them. Okay. All right, so that is the officer <laughs> who's now shouting back at her. He says, ma'am, if you do not stop screaming, this is going to become a problem for you. And it is, right? It's going to be interfering with an officer's investigation. This could easily be some sort of a disorderly conduct charge. This is this is disobeying a lawful order from an officer. I mean, there's a million different ways that this could go. He's giving her fair warning, and she refuses to comply. Let's listen one more time. Wait till my son hears. Wait till my son hears what you're saying. Stop yelling. From the camera. This is going to be a problem for you. Three of them I don't care. Okay, cool. Then get over here. You're not here to arrest me. I sure f***ing am. She's good. All right. Did you see that shove? That's where it was. And so, you know, there's I, I clipped out all of the as many of the swear words as, as I could get. And I think I got them all. But what I want to just point out is that you can see right there where the judge is now going to be shoving the officer. So let's watch that again. And we can just frame, freeze frame it a little bit. So she is now going to the ground. That's his wife. And he is running up, and as we see, he's now extending his arms, and he's making contact with that officer's body, and there's the push. So we see it right there, so that crisps up a little bit. He is now pushing that officer. It's a volitional push. Quite frankly, I don't think he ever should have been left let out of custody of that other officer. I'm, I'm kind of surprised uh, that he actually was able to break free and actually go and interfere. You know, if this were a different situation... Uh, he, he would have been shot, right? I mean, we've seen situations like this where somebody is now running after an officer. They just pull out a gun and shoot that guy, right? I mean, this was this is essentially what the argument was in Jacob Blake's case. Jacob Blake was fleeing from an officer and he was going around the car and he was going to go do something else and the cop didn't like that he was fleeing away from him and so he pulled out his gun and shot him seven times in the back. So this easily could have been the same situation. This guy is physically attacking another officer and the cop who was originally talking to him just doesn't do anything about it just allows him to go do it so uh, in, in many different cases in many different situations that we've analyzed here on this channel he would have already been shot multiple times in the back but they knew he was a supreme court judge uh from what we have gathered thus far so uh let's go back to the clip now you can see him once again just right there, arms extended, and he is pushing that other officer to the ground. So in many in many states, at least in Arizona, you're going to see, you know, that's that's basically an assault right there. Uh, it's already done and over with. You have physical contact. He is pushing him out of the way. It's impairing his physical uh, standing, and that's, that's a physical contact. It's an offensive touch that it can, it constitutes a crime at that point, uh, even more of a serious crime because that contact is happening with an officer. And so we can see that just goes on and he pushes him right there there's the push and that officer is clearly thrown off balance and then sort of stands up a little bit now the other cop realizes oh no and you can see him running out of this frame over here that's his hand being extended so he is just making making a quick run 
to go regain control of the situation. So you can see him swooping in there. So let's watch this one more time. In I sure she's good. She's good. She's good. She's good. All right, so now this officer has his hand on the judge. He's saying, you have to keep your hands off a cop. You have to keep your hands off a cop. You're not allowed to do that. She's going to go. Listen, my daughter and my son are both buffalo police officers. I know, I know. And you I'm calling right now. Dude! You would not want them put, putting your hand, somebody putting their hand. Dude! You are not going to fight a cop. Hey! You arrest my wife, you're going to be sorry. All right, so did you hear that? That was the first threat. Actually threatening an officer. Dude, if you arrest my wife, you're going to be sorry. Let's listen to that one more time. So he's watching his wife sort of being carried away. Hey, you arrest my wife, you're going to be sorry. Let him. Let him. My, and my daughter are both I police officers. Care. There he says, my son and my daughter are both police officers. So now he's he's using uh, some, you know, basically uh, a color of authority to persuade them to let his wife go. Honorable police I don't care. officers. I don't okay. care. Oh my god, are you kidding me, dude? That's the judge that you can hear. Listen to you scream. Why? Because it's the truth. It's No, because I want to hear everybody talk. 15 years of everybody's story. You're cheering them first. You I'm don't understand. Listen. Ask any neighbor. Listen. That doesn't mean I'm not going to listen to you. I'm you need you to get the to If you don't get the cops out for right now, to you're going to have a problem. All right, there is another direct threat. If you do not get the cuffs off her, you're going to have a problem. So let's go back and let's listen to that judge threaten these cops again. To you. you need to get the, if you don't get the cops off her right now, you're going to have a problem. We're not doing that. We're not threatening that. You need to get the cops off her. She's going to sit in the back of the car right now. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do for he right now. He needs to get the cops off her. We're, we're, we're not going to do that by your demand. She's going to sit in the back of the car. She's going to be in cuffs. Okay, and that's what's going to happen for right now. Let us, work, let, let us just work this through. All right. So being very, very accommodating to him, right? It, he's threatening them He multiple times. He's using sort of the color of authority of, of his position to say, if you do not comply with me, then there's going to be repercussions coming for you. And he is a Supreme Court judge. These guys work in the justice system. They're very close. So you'd have to presume that those threats are reasonable, right? Uh, somebody else making those threats who doesn't have the title of being a Supreme Court judge, maybe it doesn't carry as much weight. But in this case, I think anybody who's listening to that can validly say it's probably a legitimate type of a threat. All right. So in the second video, let's go on over and let's take a look at this. So what we'll see here is a different uh, angle from the same officers. But now what we're hearing is sort of the aftermath. So this is where he's actually explaining to them what took place. And this is where he's going to be calling out some uh, names. He's going to, you know, calling out other officers, calling out the name, uh, the mayor of the local town. And he's, you know, name dropping some stuff in order to sort of talk himself out of this. Let's listen in. We didn't do nothing. We basically walked the dog, came back, and they come out of the house. They're like, you got an effing problem where the truck is parked? No, I heard that when I was taking a dog in the house. Okay. My wife was still outside. She walked over. She goes, yeah, move the truck. They friggin' bolt from the porch. The girl's got her friggin' hand on my wife's throat, and that's when I walked over there. And that's when it all started. Okay. I mean, are you friggin' kidding me? They can't wait to start trouble. Talk to any... Those two neighbors with the dogs don't even live in the street they know. All right, now you can hear him, right? Listen to his voice. He's slurring those words pretty bad. It's pretty clear that he's intoxicated. Uh, and, and, you know, intoxication is no defense. You can be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, but you're still responsible for your conduct. You can't just say, well, I was drunk, therefore I'm not criminal, criminally liable. So he's not going to be able to use that as a defense. Most people know that. He certainly knows that. But you can hear it. Just add some context to what he is experiencing right now. Now he is going to, you're going to see this highlight here. That is where he's going to actually call out uh, the, the mayor's name by name. I just made a little note there. So get ready for that coming up. Yellow nose. These guys know he knows, the guy that was just here knows, they can't wait to start problems. Okay. Okay? And listen, I'm good friends with Brian Brown. He's like, you know, Mark, just friggin' ignore him. I did ignore him. I called and said, 
the truck is freaking blocked block in half the driveway. And then when we come back, that's all it is. Mm. I'm talking like this kid freaking punch me in the face. And I'm getting a fat lip. All right, so there he goes back and he says, no, the reason I'm talking like that is not because of the alcohol. It's because I got punched in the face. I've got a fat lip. Now you're going to hear at the end of this, it's very, very quiet. So I'm going to play it a few times because it's kind of uh, hysterical. But he's the, the cop, as he's, he's, he's about to get scolded pretty badly by a cop in an epic scolding that I think is one for the history books. But before we get there, this is something where as the officer is walking him away, he says, you smell like cheap beer. So there's clearly alcohol involved. Now, this judge is trying to sort of you know, poo poo that away and say, no, it's because I got punched in the face. But we all know what really is going on. Now, that being said, well, let's listen in. So, but I wouldn't have my friggin shirt ripped like this. He friggin tore the shirt grabbing me. And freaking rip my necklace off. Okay. Okay. Like, like, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm fighting the guy. Okay. I mean, I walked over to grab Maria. He goes, "Oh, you want to go, tough guy?" I'm like, "No, job, take it away." Boom. And push. So let me ask you this: two, two questions. First off, is how do we prevent something like this in the future? All right. So did you hear what that cop asked him? How do we prevent something like this in the future? It's a great question, right? The cops are there to make sure that this doesn't continue to happen again. So what would a normal person answer to that? Well, you'd say, well, listen, you know, I, I, I apologize. I, you're right. I should maybe go see a counselor to deal with my anger management problems. Uh, maybe we should move. Maybe we should uh, set up some camcorders so we can show you and, and you put up a fence or, you know, do something right. A reasonable person would analyze the situation and say, yeah, I mean, uh, you're right. This is all unreasonable. What can we do to make sure this doesn't happen again? But let's see what this judge has to say. So again, the cop asked him, how do we make sure this doesn't happen again? And he says, I'll do it a summer event. Okay. With these two, they, they, I mean, the whole, everybody, they start next week will be with them. Okay. The next week after I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask some of these people because I, I want oh, some trust. Because I know. mean, I'm sure you understand. Me I'm fair. getting, get around in the car and I'll bring her inside. And I didn't mean to tackle you, but I mean, you kind of threw my wife down on the ground pretty hard and I don't appreciate that. All right. So two things. One, he answers that incorrectly. If the cop says, how do we prevent this from happening again? And he says, Dude, it's never going to stop. This is going to keep going on and on and on. You guys are going to be back out here again. That's the wrong answer. You don't want to say that. All right. That's just uh, first. You don't want to talk to the cops at all. He's he's uh, making a pretty big, uh, uh, pretty critical couple of mistakes here. Not only did he get into the altercation, but he's now trying to name drop. He's now trying to use his position to you know, to make threats to the police. And then he's also just running his mouth. And watch as these two cops are just standing there, just letting this guy go off. They know it's all being recorded. They know he's just, you know, spilling his guts, telling everything that happened. And they just are standing there, just letting him go and go and go. And uh, then he makes what as defense attorneys, this makes our job very difficult. He makes these admissions to what he did. Now, it wouldn't have really mattered in this case because we have video footage of this, but he turns around and he admits. So he tells the cop, hey, sorry I tackled you, man, but you were you know, throwing my wife on the ground. So he just, not only do we see it on the video footage, but this Supreme Court judge comes out and then admits it. Yeah, sorry I tackled you. Let's go back and let's listen as he makes that criminal admission. I mean, you kind of threw my wife down on the ground pretty hard. I think it will be with them. Okay. The next week after I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask some of these people because I, I want oh, some trust. Because, I know. mean, I'm sure you understand, so I'm getting. Fair. Get around in the car and I'll bring her inside. And I didn't mean to tackle you, but I mean, you kind there of threw is. my wife down on the ground pretty hard, and I don't appreciate that. I understand that. All right? I really don't. If, that, if I would do that to your wife and you're outside, you'd do the same thing. Sure. Well, if you were a police officer okay. and she was screaming no, in my, my face. No, my daughter's a police officer, and I know what you guys are going through right now. And trust me, my daughter's a police officer, my son-in-law's a police officer, my brother, my, okay. my, and my son's a And if was screaming a, at your daughter and approaching her like that, she would have done the same thing. No, you grab... All right, so now he's getting pretty combative, right? Now he's starting to, to, to really mouth off with these cops, and he's going to say, you know, why don't you take some constructive criticism here? And he's starting to do this this listen i'm in charge of this ordeal you guys are not in charge anymore i am the one who is going to tell you how this thing's going to work why don't you get my wife put her in the van pull her around back here we'll have this conversation so he's kind of trying to throw his weight around a little bit and that is not something that officers like they don't like it from anybody uh they don't like it 
from defense attorneys. They don't like it from judges. They don't like it from, from everyday regular civilians. And he's going to see how that works here very shortly. So let's cut on back over there and see what he has to say. I had my wife from over there and dragged her over here, which was not necessary. Okay. So you need to chill out about that. I'm just, well, I'm I have just a giving, camera, so that's it's it's all documented. I don't here care about your camera. Just to give it a little constructive criticism, dude. Okay. Okay. Let me give you some constructive criticism. You want to drop another copper's name? You want to scream about you know Kamal, you're the mayor? Why don't you shut the fuck up? And you kiss a question. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so great. All right, uh, I may not be able to keep it together on this. Okay. Okay. Let me give you some constructive criticism. You want to drop another copper's name? You want to scream about you know Kamal, you're the mayor? Why don't you shut the fuck up? And you kiss a question. Shut the fuck up. Push your hands right back. Push your hands right back. You want to be difficult? You want to, you want to say all these coppers and all these things? No, I don't want to make us look dirty. Is that what you want to do? I so how am I helping you now? How, tell me. Tell me how can I help you? How? Shut, shut up and let me talk to you. Okay, sir. Shut up. Shut up and let me talk to you. Since you had so much to say and you touch a cop. So let me talk to you. Guy. Let me talk to you. Guy. Quiet! No! You're not done talking yet! And I'm not done talking to you! So let's be quiet, Dad! So Son can get some words in! You're saying everybody's fucking name and dropping everybody's name with a badge and you're expecting a special treatment. How does that look like to everybody in this environment right now? It doesn't look good. I know. And then you grab him? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Why are you still over talking? We're going back over to my car. No, I'm just saying you're over so right. We're going over here. You smell like sheep. All right, so we got to break that down a little bit. You know, on t uh, and two things. One, it's it's hysterical for me because this is so therapeutic to watch one of these people who is in this position of power, who makes laws, who sends people to jail, who writes cases, who does all sorts of things that impact everyday people like you or I, but then thinks that they operate on a different level. The hypocrisy is just so... It, it's so burning to your to your just senses in every which way. It's so disgusting that these people try to do this. And this judge it was doing it willingly, volitionally. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that he could get into this whole deal. The police would come up. He knows half the, the police department. And he's going to be able to throw his weight around. He is literally acting like the, the most hypocritical type of person that you could ever imagine in this position. And he gets called out on it. This cop just comes and gives him the scolding of a lifetime. And it is so therapeutic. I enjoyed it. Now, on the other side, this whole thing is very sad, right? It's kind of one of those things that I'm laughing at it, but it's really, really sad. It's a, it's a horrendous commentary on what we have in our justice system, that this guy is so confident and so brazen that he's just right in the open telling a, a whole handful of cops, right around him. Hey, if you touch her, if you put her in there, if you do this, if you do that, and he's threatening them willingly. And then when he's standing there after the whole deal has basically you know, ended, he's now telling this cop, why don't you take some constructive criticism? Why don't you throw my wife in the van and pull her around? It's not until that point that this cop finally snaps and says, all right, listen, and he gets in his face, F in this, F in that, F in this, F in that. And he gives him a great scolding too. And I mean, this cop is incredible. I talk a lot about bad police officers on this channel. This is a good police officer from this ordeal, from this situation, what we're seeing right here. This is exactly what I would love to see. Uh, just, you know, really bad people abusing their positions, just getting talk to right in the public and all of this is going to be recorded it's all public record now and i'm playing it right here on youtube so we all get to see it and we all get to enjoy it now the flip side to that argument would be well this cop when you really hear him he's, he's telling him to shut his mouth right he's telling him hey you're using everybody's name it doesn't look good it looks bad stop stop telling everybody about you know this little deal that we have is one way to read it i don't read it like that but that is one way to read it right he's kind of telling him to shut up and get back in within the blue code of silence. Um, I really didn't read it like that. I have seen some comments like that. Uh, I think this cop was 100% right. He's yelling at him saying, you're trying to make us look dirty. You're trying to make us, trying to impugn our records by dropping these names, saying your kids are in the force, you know the mayor, you're a judge, all this stuff. And 
he just throws it right back at him. It's so therapeutic. It's great. Uh, I don't like to see people in difficult positions. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I have a lot of privilege in helping people who are being charged with crimes through the justice system. And so a big part of me, you know, kind of is feels a little bit dirty taking so much glee and seeing this guy get what's coming to him. But he is abusing his power. He's abusing his position. And he is trying to operate on a different set of justice than you or I would. And so to see him just, you know, get a talking to right now is is very therapeutic. So let's go back to it and let's just watch it one more time because that's it's worth it. Look, constructive criticism, dude. Okay. Okay. Let me give you some constructive criticism. You want to drop another copper's name? You want to scream about you know Kamal, you're the mayor? Why don't you shut the f up? And you listen, quiet. Shut your mouth. Put your hands behind your back. Listen. Put your hands behind your back. Okay. You want to be difficult? You want to you want to say all these coppers and all these things? Oh, you want to make us look dirty? Is that what you want to do? I so how am I helping you now? How tell me? Tell me how can I help you? How shut the, shut up and let me talk to you, old okay, sir. Shut up. Shut up. And let me talk to you. Since you had so much to say and you touch a cop, so let me talk to you, guy. Let me talk to you, guy. Quiet. Quiet. No, you're not done talking yet, and I'm not done talking to you. So let's be quiet, Dad. So son can get some words in. You're saying everybody's fucking name and dropping everybody's name with a badge. And you're expecting a special treatment. How does that look like to everybody That's in this good. environment right That's now? Good. It doesn't look good. I know. And then you right. grab him? You're what do you want me to right do? Listen. What do you want me to right. do? Why are you still over talking? You're right. We're going back over to my car. No, no, I'm just no. saying, I hope it's all right. We're going over here, man. You yes. smell like sheep. And you didn't like the beer. And then you touch him. What is wrong with you drop your daughter's name? That cop is so mad. And it's just so satisfying. He's so mad. He's scolding him the entire way back to the vehicle. I'm not sure how well you could hear that, but it's it's just beautiful. He's just scolding him and scolding him. He's very disappointed in him. As are we, as is society. What is this what does this judge think he is doing? All right. So now that we know what happened, let's do a quick recap. What what do we see? What did we hear in there? Well, this was some of the language. Listen. I'm good friends with Byron Brown, who's the mayor. If you don't get the cops off, off of her right now, you're going to have a problem. He said that once or twice. You arrest my effing wife, you're going to be sorry. And you know that's the type of language that we saw coming from a Supreme Court judge. So one of the first things that you would ask in a situation like this is what are the repercussions going to be to the judge? Is he going to get in trouble? We, judges have different codes of conduct and judicial canons, and they have uh, you know O's that they take. And what happens if this judge is acting in this way? Is that going to be a problem for him? Well, Let's take a look at the New York law about this, the New York canons, the New York chief administrative judge statutes, their code of conduct says this specifically, says an independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable to justice in our society. A judge should participate in establishing, maintaining, blah, 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 and shall personally observe those standards so that the integrity and independence of the judiciary will be preserved. So this is the basis for it. This is what we want, right? This is the reason why we have judges. This is the first part of the judicial canons, and it says that we want to protect the integrity and the independence of the judiciary. And so, is he doing that? Well, let's take a look at the next statute. So we have section 100.2, and we'll take a look here. It says a judge, this is a rule for the judges, not criminal codes. This says a judge shall avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety in all of the judge's activities. So we look through some of these different things. It says a judge shall respect and comply with the law and shall act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the integrity and the impartiality of the judiciary. Does, th does what you saw there, does it show respect for the law? Does it instill public confidence in the integrity or the impartiality of the judiciary? Not so sure that it does. And I'm talking about his behavior shall not allow family or political or social or other relationships to influence a judge's conduct. Ooh, well, we don't know. That one's not super on point. Subsection C, a judge shall not lend the prestige of the judicial office to advance interests that are private of the judges, nor shall a judge convey or permit others to convey the impression that they are in a special position to influence the judge and they shall not testify as a character witness. So how about that? Is this judge here, was this judge lending the prestige of the judicial office to advance his private interests? Well, yeah, of course he was, right? He was 
using his position, saying, I know the mayor, my people are in, you know, in office, and they knew that he was a judge. And so if he is now using that to leverage the release of his wife or to you know, make the police go away or to threaten them and say, there's going to be repercussions coming for you guys if you do this. Yeah, he's using the prestige of his office to advance his private interests. So what happens in these types of situations? Well, it depends on what the judges, you know, what the judge commission wants to do. Do they want to um, reprimand him? Do they want to sanction him? Do they want him to make out, al take alcohol classes? Is the state bar going to disbar him and make, make him no longer even an attorney? There's a whole range of different things that they can do. And on this point, it looks like they are actually investigating him. So Law 360 says that the local law enforcement closed its investigation. We're going to get to that here in a minute. But the state's commission on judicial conduct is in the midst of, it, of its investigation into Justice Grisanti's behavior, according to emails and letters provided to the judge. Now, Joseph and Gina Malay, who fought with the judge and his wife, uh, sent letters in. The watchdog agency has a power to discipline or remove judges who abuse their position and they're confirming or denying any of the investigation. So that's just as to him being a judge. Is he going to continue to be a judge? Well, we don't know. We're going to see what the commission has to say about that and whether he's going to be disciplined or reprimanded. But now let's go into the criminal code, the criminal conduct. So what we just saw, you watched the same video that I did. We went through it a bunch on this channel right now. But is that criminal behavior? Because he didn't get charged with anything, and we're going to show you that, but the, the actual prosecutor didn't charge this judge with anything. He pushed a cop, he threatened cops, and no criminal charges. That's kind of weird, right? That's what I was thinking. So I wanted to look up the New York state law. What are the laws about pushing a police officer? What are the laws about you know getting into assaults or altercations? And they're actually not quite what I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be a little bit more strict. And so there is some pretty decent, I think, argument that he didn't actually assault that officer. Let's take a look at the statute, and you can be the judge of it. So when we go, we want to look at section 120.08, which comes from the New York uh, Code, and it says assault on a police officer, on a peace officer. You can see it right here. So when you're looking at statutes, you say, okay, that one's right on point, right? Where He pushed this officer, looked like an assault to me, so this must be the most relevant statute. Well, once we read through it, we're going to see here, it says a person is guilty of assault on a peace officer, and then it goes through everybody else and everyone else, firefighters, uh, you know, paramedics, technical performance of their duty, so on and so forth, all these different people from, oh no, from performing. Okay. A person is guilty of assault on a peace officer. If he or she causes such serious physical injury to such peace officer, and, and it's preventing them from, from performing a lawful duty. So they're guilty if they prevent them from, from performing a lawful duty and he or she causes serious physical injury to that officer. And so if you do that, it's going to be a class C felony. So then you have to ask yourself, this is where statutory analysis and different interpretations come in. But we just saw that we saw that statute and we said, well, what does that mean specifically? What does serious physical injury actually mean? And we've got to look to a different part of the law. So we go over to section one or 10.00 and it defines both physical injury and it also defines serious physical injury. So you're going to want to listen to both of these physical injury means the impairment of physical condition. Okay, so that's pretty loose, right? What is the impairment of somebody's physical condition? Or it could also be substantial pain. The other definition is serious physical injury. So we have regular physical injury and then serious physical injury. It means physical injury which creates a substantial risk of death or which causes death or serious protracted disfigurement, protracted impairment of health or protracted loss of impairment of function of any bodily organ. All right, so now we know what serious bodily injury means. And under the context of the prior statute, if you are preventing a law enforcement officer from performing their public duties and you cause them serious physical injury, then that's where you're going to be found guilty of that particular statute. So in this case, did Judge Grisanti actually ser cause serious bodily injury or serious physical injury to that officer? The answer is no on that right? He didn't. I mean, he just kind of nudged him and kind of pushed him over. And so it doesn't fall within that description from my reading of the statute. It just doesn't reach this level. It says serious physical injury, 
which creates a substantial risk of death? No. Which causes death or serious or you know disfigurement? No. A serious impairment of health? No. And so this is the original statute. He must cause serious physical injury. So this statute's just out. I don't think it applies. And I've seen some news articles saying that this would be a class C felony. In other words, saying that this this judge is getting away from a class C felony. And I don't think this that charge would have stuck even if he weren't a judge, if this was just a regular guy, I don't think that he would have, that, that charge would have stuck. It just wouldn't have because there was no serious physical injury. But does that mean you can just push cops and get away with it? Well, of course, the answer on that is no. There are other statutes which may be applicable, and let's look into them. So we have another statute out of New York, which is called assault in the second degree. Here's what that looks like. So it says a person is guilty of assault in the second degree when with the intent to cause serious physical injury again. So we know that that didn't happen here, so that's out. With the intent to cause physical injury. Okay, so that's a lower level, right? When we're talking about physical injury, we're just talking about uh, basically essentially physical contact. Remember here, physical impairment of the physical condition. So what does that mean? Is there a definition for impairment of the physical condition? No, there isn't. Uh, not that I was able to find in the New York statute. So you just have to sort of, um, you can look, there's other ways to analyze that. You can look to other case law and you can look to other, you know, other potential statutes and you can read uh, all, all sorts of, I'm sure that's defined somewhere. I just don't know what it is because I didn't do all the case law research in, in, in it, but you can just sort of look at that. You know, did it impair his physical condition? Well, yeah, it did. It, it, it did impair his physical condition because he was knocked over or he's you know, thrown off balance. So I think that fits, but he didn't do it by means of a deadly weapon. So that one doesn't fit either. So part two is also out, but then we get down to part three and it says with the intent to prevent a peace officer. Okay. So that one sounds like it might be on point, right? That's more about what we're talking about. Somebody assaulting a police officer. And then what you're going to see is this just goes on and on. It says sanitation. It's defining all of the different people who are going to be within the purview here uh, of, of uh, licensed practical nurses, health sanitarians, and so forth. It goes on and on and on from performing a lawful duty, from performing a lawful duty. We're going to see a lot of that. So if you're preventing that officer from doing something like that, and he or she causes physical injury to such peace officer, then this is going to be a crime. Right. And so I think that one actually does fit. He or she causes physical injury. And if you if you sort of analogize that back to this statute, impairment of the physical condition is physical injury means impairment of the physical condition. Then I think that fits physical injury is this definition impairment of the physical condition. We already saw that because he was pushed over. So I think this one actually does fit right. The first one doesn't because it requires serious physical injury but the second one only requires regular physical injury. And as we know from the New York definition, the physical injury can just mean impairment of a physical condition. So it's a very low standard. So I think that one fits. Now I thought, you know, running up to an officer and pushing an officer would have been a more serious felony as it is in Arizona, but in New York, I, I, just by the statute, it doesn't look like it is. There is another assault statute, which may be worth covering. I think it is. It's, it's the assault in the third degree, which comes out of New York. And this one is even lesser. It's not even a felony. It's a misdemeanor. So certainly this judge would have been found guilty of this one if he would have been charged, but we know that he wasn't. So this one is section 120.00 guilty of assault in the third degree when with the intent to cause physical injury, again, that means impairment of the physical condition to another person. He causes such injury to such person or a third person. So that fits recklessly causes physical injury to another person that fits and this one, number three, doesn't doesn't use a deadly weapon or dangerous instrument, so that doesn't fit. But either either way, it's either going to be a class D felony or a class A misdemeanor if this officer were charged with, or if, if, if this judge were charged with assaulting that officer, but we know that uh, he wasn't. But is that it? Are, is there any other potential charges out of New York? I mean, we're going to hear from the county attorney, the, the prosecutor who makes decisions on charging these. And he's, he says, no, there's no, we didn't No, There's nothing to charge him with because we talked to the officer and the officer didn't want to press charges. And, you know, this whole thing was just a misunderstanding and both sides were acting childish and we're all just going to walk away. All right. So that's fine. Let's say the officer doesn't want to 
press charges. The officer agrees. It was a light push. He didn't, you know, get injured or anything. Let's let bygones be bygones. Is there anything else that the county attorney could have latched onto that he maybe could have prosecuted this judge for? Let's take a look. So we can go over to section 195.05. What does this say? It says obstructing governmental administration in the second degree. A person is guilty of obstructing governmental administration when he intentionally obstructs, impairs, or perverts the administration of law or other governmental function or prevents or attempts to prevent a public servant from, from performing an official function. All right, so when you first read this, you think maybe this is for like, you know, big government agencies or something, but no, a public servant from performing an official function by means of intimidation, physical force, or interference. Oh my goodness. I think we have a jackpot, don't we? He threatened the cops a number of times. He physically pushed a cop and he was clearly interfering with the entire ordeal. So this statute absolutely fits. And I think that one is also a class A misdemeanor, as we can see. And was he charged with that? No, he wasn't. So the, the county attorney could have easily looked at this statute and said, yeah, he was making threat. He was threatening our officers. He was saying, if you touch her, if you put her in there, if you don't take the handcuffs off of her, it's going to be repercussions coming for you and didn't decide to charge him on that one either. And then the last one, there's many other potential criminal charges, but we're not going to spend all day doing it. The other one is section 195, which is official misconduct. A public servant is guilty of official misconduct when with the intent to obtain a benefit or deprive another person of a benefit, he commits an act relating to his office, but constituting an unauthorized exercise of his official functions, knowing that such act is unauthorized. So what would that what would that mean? What would be a good example of that? Well, if you are a Supreme Court judge and you have a lot of legal power and you are threatening other officers that if they don't let your wife out of custody, that there's going to be big problems for them. That is an unauthorized act. You're not allowed to do that. You may be a judge, but one of your official functions is not to scold and threaten police officers when they're arresting your wife. And so he knows that that is not allowed. He knows that that's misconduct and that is criminal behavior. That is criminal law out of New York. So the official misconduct is a class A misdemeanor. But as we all know, nothing is going to happen to this judge, at least in terms of criminality, because the county attorney, the district attorney has already decided they're not even going to press charges. Why would they? He gets special privileges because he's a Supreme Court judge. This comes from Law 360. The Grisantes were detained for what appeared to be over an hour. In July, John Flynn declined to prosecute. He said it was a street fight between residents. All parties were equally childish. When asked about claims that the Grisantes were drunk, he told Law 360 he had not heard that at all. He also told Law 360 that they were upset by Grisanti's behaviors, but the actions didn't rise to the level of criminality. District attorney said he took their judgment for that and did not investigate the Grisanti's actions towards the police, which is just outstanding, amazing. Took their judgment for that and did not investigate their actions towards the police. Flynn did not respond to questions on Monday, including whether his office reviewed the body camera videos. Why would he, why would he need to watch those? It's a Supreme Court judge. Our office has concluded our investigation into the altercation and will be making no further comments. No further comments about this case at all. And so you can see why you can take such pleasure in the fact that he got scolded by that officer because there really isn't going to be any other justice in this case. This cop or this judge assaulted that cop and he's just going to get away with it because He's a Supreme Court judge. You or I or any one of the clients that we've represented in our past who would ever be in a situation like this would get the book thrown at them. It's not even a question. They would never, never get the opportunity to say this was just a misunderstanding. If we went to a prosecutor and said, listen, this whole thing was a misunderstanding. He just pushed that cop because he tackled his wife. They would laugh us out of their office. And I'm not even joking about that because it's, it's absurd. You can't run up to a cop and push a cop when he's trying to effectuate an arrest. It's a huge no-no. It's a major problem. This judge knows it, but he's too plugged in with the political system. He's got cover from the police. He's got cover from the prosecutors. The whole system is going to be protecting this guy unless the people stand up and call it out and force some change. And we have elections coming up. 
criminal justice reform is a big issue, but this is why we started this channel. This is why I started the show that we do once a week at 4 p.m. called Watching the Watchers Live. It's to call out this type of nonsense. It's, it's, it's infuriating that these guys get away with it. And what can we do about it other than vote? get involved. So if this outrages you, love it if you subscribed. We cover a lot of this type of stuff on this channel. Would also love it if you shared it. We get age restricted a lot on this channel. And, you know, sometimes sometimes the algorithms on the different platforms don't like recommending this content when you're speaking truth to power. So I appreciate that you share it and you invite people to be a part of this conversation because quite frankly, I think that's the only way that any of this is really going to change is with public uprising with public saying enough already and with the public demanding equal justice for those in charge and for those of us. So thank you so much for sticking with me this entire time. I had a great time talking with you about this today. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>